Hi everybody, it's Stephen Brook and welcome to Architectural Photography and Composition. If you're new to the channel, welcome and I hope that you'll subscribe. A little while ago I talked about layering and why I thought that in addition to being being able to actually see your work as you're doing it. I thought that layering really revolutionized architectural photography and it gave you the ability to use images taken at different exposures and blend them together to make one image. And back in the day of film, you may have only five minutes during the course of the day to be able to get that shot. And with layering, of course, you can do, it has expanded the time we have available to shoot. So if you only have one or two images, well, if you have two images to blend together, you can use regular layering techniques in Photoshop. But if you have more than two layers, say three or four or even five, if you're shooting outdoors on a really contrasty day or shooting inside with limited amount of time where you can't do lights and you have to shoot through with bright windows and with very high contrast interiors, you need to be able to make a series of exposures and then be able to blend them together to make basically one balanced exposure. I talked about how Aurora was the first high dynamic range uh, processor that I found that produced images that didn't look like sci-fi book covers, that the HDR really looked good. Well, Aurora has been significantly upgraded to Luminar Neo with dozens of improvements that make it an even better HDR processor. It enables you, for example, to take images that are this dark to show the lights and this bright to show the shadows, one in between, and put them together easily to blend them to make one perfectly balanced photograph. Now what I've done here is I've added a couple of photographs onto this blank background here and I've done standard layering techniques that I've shown you before. So what I'd like to do is a relatively stripped down demo to show you basically how easy it is to use Luminar Neo. So I'm going to start in Bridge and here I've got a series of exposures from really dark all the way to very overexposed and I'm going to take for the sake of this demo, one, that's real dark, but it gives me the lights, two, an overall, but you can see the shadows aren't good and the highlights aren't good, and then one that gives me some detail in the shadows. I'm gonna right click them and I'm gonna open them in Luminar Neo 1.7. So now, the one step that differs from Aurora is I go to catalog and here I have the three images that I just uploaded. So I'm going to pick all three and over here where it says HDR merge, I'm going to drop all three into HDR merge. Now there's a little rosette up here. First thing I'm going to do is click auto alignment and if you have ever tried to align images that you've taken that were slightly out of register, you know what a chore that can be. This auto alignment is almost worth the price of admission. I click on chromatic aberration, get rid of the magenta and cyan edges. And then for ghost reduction, even though I'm shooting inside, I click on ghost reduction and for the reference image, if I'm shooting outside, I'm going to take the darkest one where I don't have any leaves moving around. I'll use that as my reference and I do highest because I want to make sure I get it as clean as I can. So I, because I'm blending images, I don't get these ghost images. Then I'm going to just click Merge and Luminar Neo is going to put these three images together into one. So here's my merged image and I'm going to go now to Edit. 
and it's going to open up my image. Notice I've got detail in my highlights, details in my shadows, even here. The next thing I'm now, there are a variety of manipulation tools here, and I'm not going to go into all of them. I'm going to just do the basics. I'm going to go to develop. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to color because I can't assess anything until I get the color right. I'm going to use the white balance tool and I'm going to click on what I know to be something that's white in this image. Now, this is a little bit cool to my taste, so I'm going to warm this up just a little bit. I'm going to go to optics and I'm going to click auto defringe in case the chromatic aberration didn't get all of it. Then I can adjust the exposure. I can adjust the contrast. I can do all the things that you do in camera raw. I can do them with Luminar Neo's raw processing tools. Even under landscape, it has a dehaze, which I'm going to actually use a little bit to take down a little of the haze around the lights. And it has a foliage enhancer if you're going to do this for landscape. But I use this on interiors as well. So again, this is just a general workflow. I'm now going to go to File, Open In, and I'm going to open it in Photoshop. Okay, here we are. Now, unlike Aurora, Luminar Neo gives you a null layer, and I'm going to just flatten this out right now. Now, I have a macro to do this. I'm going to convert the mode to 8 bits. I'm going to do image, image size, and I'm going to make the resolution without resampling 300 dpi. I'm going to go here image, convert to profile, and I'm going to convert this to Adobe RGB 1998. So now I can do anything that I normally do with an image coming out of camera raw. I can go ahead and do whatever I want with this image, including I can take some of the cyan out here. I can add a few images to this uh, to these blank TV screens. So this is an absolutely wonderful program. And what I have here is the Luminar Neo workflow, which you can copy. You know, you can freeze frame this and copy the steps that I just went through. This is in going from bridge all the way to edit, bringing it into Photoshop, flattening the layer, making these changes and ending up with a file that you could never do with a single shot. This is great for interiors. It's great for exteriors. If you have a really high contrast landscape that you're doing where you've got bright sky, bright clouds, and really dark shadows in the, in the greenery. You can put three and four and five images together and Luminar Neo will make one absolutely usable image that does not look phony, does not look like a sci-fi book cover, looks the way your eye will see it. So if you would like to see how this works with your gear, you can try, you can have a free trial or you can purchase Luminar Neo and use the link that we're providing. I should tell you that I have an affiliate marketing agreement with Luminar to help support the site. This is the only one that I have because I believe in this product and it has saved me hundreds of hours of processing time. Also, I continue, even though I have a video on essential equipment, I do get a constant stream of emails asking, what am I using for this? What am I using for that? And so we put together an essential equipment list and here's and the link is here and you can see exactly what I'm using. Uh, I tend to use the least amount of gear that I that I need to be able to to do my work. I've never been a gearhead. I just get the, the basics that I need.
You can also support the site if you consider purchasing a copy of Architectural Photography and Composition. It's a 360 page ebook that will cost you less than lunch. And it will either jumpstart your work if you're just starting on this, or if you've done some work and want to kind of tidy up some of the things you're not real sure about, or if you don't have a background in art history, I provide dozens and dozens of examples from art history that inform the work that we're doing in architectural photography. So please go over to stephenbrookphotography.com and have a look at the book. I think it's something you would enjoy having. Thank you very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you again soon.